Hello family, welcome to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Angela and this channel is all about beauty, fashion, and life. If you've been watching my channel, you know that I've started a series on how to dress for your body shape. This is my third installment. It is how to dress for the rectangular body shape. Now, if you'd like to see what I have to say and what my hints and suggestions are, then stay tuned. Now, let's get started. Now, I'm going to start this video off like I've started the other two videos by saying regardless of what your body shape is and regardless of what your body size is, I really want all of you and like myself included to love the body that you're in. It is the only one that you're going to get. God made you perfectly the way you are and I really, really want you to love your body. Now, I was recently watching a video on YouTube. I think it was called one of the soft underbelly videos. Those are some great videos. He does nothing but interviews. And the lady said that she looks in the mirror and she just does not love herself. And it made me really, really sad. So my recommendation is if you can't look in the mirror and just, I love all of me, find something. There is something on your body that you can say, this is beautiful, whether it's your skin, whether it's your nails, whether it's your fingers, your hair, you have nice, beautiful, thick hair, or the fact that you have hair at all is a wonderful thing. In my opinion, you have a beautiful smile. You have a beautiful spirit. I know that's not a physical thing, but that's something to be proud of. For those of you who struggle loving all of yourself, try to love some portion of yourself. Just start with that. Okay. Now, before I get started, I thought I'd do this one a little bit differently. I found three celebrities who have a rectangular body shape. All three are very beautiful. And I pulled two pictures of each one where you can really, really see that they have a rectangular body shape and there's nothing wrong with that. They're still beautiful. And another picture where they are dressed a little bit differently, where their stylists, I feel dressed them perfectly for their particular body shape. What you will see or what you will hear me talk about is uh, adding volume to create curves for this particular body shape. And you'll be able to see that in those pictures. So those three celebrities are Gwyneth Paltrow, Kate Hudson, and Heidi Klum. I know, Heidi Klum, the Victoria's Secret model. Yes, she does have a rectangular body shape and I'll show you in just a second. But I'm gonna start with Gwyneth Paltrow. Let me get my glasses because you girl is, can't see this computer screen. Hopefully. So this is the first picture and this is the pictures of Gwyneth and I think this gown looks beautiful on her. It's a pretty, pretty champagne gold. It looks great on her skin. She is just glowing. Also, what you can see is she has a deep plunging neckline in the middle. So it's kind of bringing your eye in. So you're not so focused on her, her, her curves or her waist and her hips and what have you. But you can also see if you measured her bust line and her hips and her waist, they'd be approximately the same uh, measurement within a few inches of each other. So she's definitely a rectangular shape here, although she is very beautiful and she looks great in this gown. So I actually have three pictures of Gwyneth. Um, this is my favorite look of the three. I love this dress. I think she looks stunning. You can see where her style is at a lot of volume on her shoulders. So that's going to automatically give her some curves up top. You don't necessarily have to have curves up top and curves on the bottom. You can mix and match or you can do that both in order to get that hourglass shape. But I think this is beautiful. She's showing some leg her legs are very muscular and very, you can tell she's very fit and very toned. And I love the way they styled her in this particular dress. And this is the third dress that Gwyneth had on. I like this one as well. It's sheer, it's see-through, it's elegant, it's classy. I love it. You can see where they added volume up top. It's Even though it's sheer, there's still some extra volume on her shoulder and they've added a lot of volume on her hips and her waist where you can see it going down all those layers of that chiffon. It looks beautiful. So that volume up top and that added volume on the bottom gives her lots of curves. And I think she looks great in this dress as well. So this is Kate Hudson. She is stunning as well. What you can see here is that she has a very typical rectangle body shape. She does not have a lot of definition in her waist or on her hips 
or on her uh, bust line. So you can tell here that they're pretty much the same measurement. But what you can also see is that her style is style her shape very well to add volume and give her lots of curves. Let me show you how. So here's Kate in her second gown. She looks stunning, doesn't she? They added a lot of volume to her hip area, not so much to her shoulders, but they have a deep plunging V line. So it kind of draws your eye in and down. And then they added that volume to the bottom. So it kind of goes out and gives the illusion of curves. This dress is fan. Fantastic. The color is stunning. She looks fantastic in this. Last but not least, we have Heidi Klum. She is gorgeous. We all know she is stunning. So you can see here where she is looking beautiful in this dress. She has this cut out detail in the middle, so it's kind of drawing your eye in. But what you can also see is that she has a rectangle body shape. I was very, very surprised when I started doing my research and she popped up on the list of rectangle body shapes because we all know we saw her in the Victoria's Secret runways and, and everything is when she looked stunning in those costumes as well. But she always looks beautiful and she's really, really great at dressing her body shape she is and her stylist so let me show you a picture where I feel like her stylist did a fantastic job and added volume and curvature to her look so this is the second look for Heidi I think she looks amazing in this dress I, she really looks like she has an hourglass shape here and I think they've done a great job of adding the layers you can look at the way the fabric is laying it's pointed directly to her waist area which is making her waist look very very defined and very narrow and then the fabric on her hip is going down as well and it's adding a little volume down the middle which is giving her that curvature look and then the, the dress itself is a mermaid so it looks like it curves around her hips and then goes out so she has a lot of curve in this picture and it's all about the placement of the fabric and being very selective about the outfit that you're going to choose for a particular body shape she looks amazing just absolutely amazing and it's just glowing in this gown now the first way that you can create the illusion of curves is defining your waistline. And the easiest way to do that is with a belt, whether that be a small belt, a medium sized belt or a large belt. Either one will work for you depending on your torso length. Now when we're doing these body shapes, there are going to be some caveats to each body shape. Sometimes the breast might be a little bit larger. Sometimes the rear end might be a little bit larger. Sometimes you may be a petite. Sometimes you may be very, very tall. So you also have to keep that in mind when you're styling. So I'm going to go with an average waistline, um, which is pretty much what most people are. So if you have an average waistline, sometimes you can get away with a larger belt size or a medium belt size. A small is going to do a little bit for you, but not quite so much. So my recommendation is a medium with belt and that looks fantastic say if you have contrasting colors so if you have like a white shirt or white dress and you put on a darker color belt the eye is going to immediately draw in and you're going to be able to see that also if you have like a darker shirt and then it's springtime is coming you may want to put on like a, a brown or a green or something like that. even a pink and you put on a white or an off-white belt it's going to draw the eye in it's going to make you like you have a defined waist and that's going to give you the illusion of some curves as well the second way you can add volume up top is to add it with your top you can do that with some ruffles on your sleeves a puff sleeve top is fantastic for a rectangular body shape it's going to add a lot of volume on the shoulder area and your body is really great at carrying that extra volume fantastic and shirts right now that have the puff sleeves and a lot of sleeve detail up top are trending so they should be very easy to find you can do that with lace you can do it with different layers you can do with a top that cuts off at the elbow or one that cuts off up top or just have some sort of dramatic detail here whatever it may be as long as it's adding volume up top it's going to add that curve and it's going to look really nice along with that you can also do a peplum top the peplum top is going to have the added advantage of typically having a little extra detail on the shoulder but it also has a band in the middle which gives you a defined waist and it's going to go out so you automatically have a curve there so it's going to give you curve every single time which is fantastic and depending on the thickness or the type of the fabric you'll have more or less curvature at your waistline another way that you can add volume up top is with shoulder pads and the easiest way to do that is with blazers it's 
spring is upon us and they have all sorts of blazers everywhere from nice cotton blazers to nice linen blazers to a cotton linen blend you can always get those so if you're a rectangle body my recommendation is finding a blazer with a shoulder pad and if you can't find that you can always order shoulder pads from like amazon they're usually very inexpensive you can just put those in and they give you extra volume in the shoulder a great blazer is going to be a blazer that not only has the shoulder pads, but it's going to cinch you at the waist. So a blazer that cuts in and kind of goes out a little bit is going to give you the illusion of curves. And those are the best blazers for your particular body shape. Now let's talk about pants. The pants that look great on a rectangular body shape are pants that are going to add volume at the bottom. And we'll get with skinny jeans later. Um, the, those pants will be a wide leg and not necessarily too wide because you don't want it to look boxy. So you're going to have to try on your slacks uh, and, and your jeans or what have you a lot of times, but it's okay. Once you get what you need and you're going to be very happy and content, it's going to put a really great smile on your face. So try some straight leg jeans. You can get the straight leg jeans that kind of cut off at the ankle or they go all the way down to the floor. Not too, too wide, but a straight leg jean is definitely going to give you some volume down bottom. You can also do a boot cut or a flare but it's just not a super super flare but just a nice little flare is going to give you a little volume at the bottom and it's going to give you some more curves now if you want a skinny jean you know i love my skinny jeans my recommendation is for a high waist skinny jean that's going to give you an illusion of a smaller waist because typically they cinch at the waist a little bit so it's going to make you give you a little bit curve on the hip and give you a little cinch in your waist area so those look great as well just don't wear the the extreme skinny jeans, the ones that are thin, they kind of feel like tights. Those are just too much, too tight. And it's just going to make you look boxy and not going to give you any curve at all. So a skinny jean that is high waist is going to look great on you as well. Now we're going to talk about dresses. The dresses that look great on a rectangular body shape are of course the goat, a wrap dress. She's going to give you some curves. Like she's going to give everybody some curves. She's gonna give you a defined waistline because it's wrapped, it's gonna draw your eye down like this and it's gonna give you the illusion of a little curve here. And most wrap dresses have a little volume at the hip, so it's gonna give you a little extra volume. So therein, you're gonna have the illusion of a curve at your waist. It's gonna look great on you. Another dress that looks great on a rectangular body shape is a A-line dress because it's going to give you a lot of volume at the bottom. So you won't have a lot of volume up top unless you have a top a dress that has volume on the sleeves or what have you, but most of them won't. Most of them will be kind of tight and kind of go down, but it's still going to give you the illusion of curves because it's going to add extra volume at the bottom. But my favorite dress on a rectangular body shape is a fit and flare. And that's a dress that's going to be voluminous up top for the most part, or going to have some sort of detail that's going to draw your eye up and added fabric or added detail that's going to add volume. It's going to cinch at the waist and it's going to go out like an A-line dress. So it's called a fit because it's fitted up top and then the flare and it goes out. So that's going to give you a great illusion of a lot of curves. When we get to skirts, the two skirts that are going to look great on you are a pleated skirt and pleated skirts are going to look fantastic because it's going to add a lot of volume, not quite as much volume as a tool skirt, but it's going to add volume on the bottom and that's going to give you curve and an A-line skirt. An A-line skirt is not going to be a lot of layers, but it's going to go out and that's going to give you curve as well. Now let's talk about things I feel you should avoid. The first is a boat neck top. That's going to kind of cut you off at the top. It doesn't add any curve whatsoever. It's very squaring. I don't feel it's personally flattering on anyone. So I would avoid a boat neck top. The second neckline that you should avoid is a square neck top for obvious reasons. It's square. It doesn't add any curvature whatsoever. And it's just not going to be flattering for your particular body shape. So I would avoid that. You can do a deep V or you can do a V neck. A sweetheart neckline is going to look beautiful. It's going to add a lot of of curvy detail and it's just gonna look really really beautiful it's gonna draw the eye in just like the v-neck is but it's gonna give the added value of a lot of curve around your bust area it's gonna look fantastic on you so do the deep v and the sweetheart neckline it doesn't have to be a deep v just a v-neck so it can draw your eye like like this the next thing you should avoid is ultra skinny jeans which most of us don't have anymore those are the skinny jeans that almost feel like leggings they're so thin and so tight they just feel like a pair of tights or a pair of leggings and that's not going to give you any curve whatsoever so i would avoid those as well also you should avoid boxy skirts boxy dresses sheath dresses that kind of just hang down it's just going to give you a straight boxy look you don't want those now unless you're going to add a belt 
to it. If you're gonna add a belt to that boxy dress, then that's okay. It's gonna give you some curve, but otherwise I would steer away from the boxy dresses. And last but not least, I would steer away from a crop jacket. A crop jacket is very, very square. It's gonna cut you off at not a great area, and it's not gonna add any curvature to your body whatsoever. It's just not gonna be quite as flattering as you would like for it to be. Got to tell y'all about my outfit of the day. I just have on some my uh, Express jeans on the bottom. This top I purchased on sale at Anthropology, but I did find it online on sale. If you like it, it uh, has really nice sleeves, but now here's the back. As you can see, it ain't none, ain't, ain't no back, that's it. But the material is really soft and it's not too thin, but it looks like it's gonna be cool in the summertime. It's really, really pretty. No, I know some of you are gonna ask what sort of bra I'm wearing. I don't have on a bra. If you've watched my videos, you know that um, probably, it's been how long has it been? Maybe eight years ago, I had breast reduction surgery and when she did the reduction, she did a lift, so she she's gonna put them where they're supposed to be. So she took them down and she put them where they were supposed to be, and that's why if I have on shirts or tops like this, I don't tip, I don't have a bra on. If um, the fabric is thin, I'll have some nipple covers, but I don't wear a bra. So for this shirt, I'm not ha I don't have on one, but the shirt is really nice and it's a uh, peplum. Let me stand up a little bit. It's a peplum top, so it's really nice. It's really nice. It's gonna be nice with some white shorts in the summertime. That's it. Bye, y'all. <laughs> Well, that's it, family. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please give me thumbs, thumbs up. I would greatly appreciate it. Also, YouTube would appreciate it. It lets them know that you're truly enjoying my video. And sis, if you have not subscribed yet, I would really, really appreciate you coming on to the Angela Michelle YouTube family and hitting that subscribe button. It also tells YouTube that you're enjoying my content. And again, I would really appreciate that as well. Now, thank you so much for spending some of your valuable time with me. I really appreciate it. And I want you to have the most blessed, and I mean the most blessed day. Bye-bye.